Tesla is making some big moves in battery materials processing, which will be an important step towards mass production of 4680 batteries in the future. Let's talk all about these moves and why they matter. I'm John and welcome to Cleaner Watt. While Tesla is sourcing an increasing amount of batteries from other suppliers, Tesla plans to build a large portion of batteries themselves in the tune of somewhere around 3 terawatt hours per year by 2030. Now making this goal a reality takes not only more battery factories, more production capacity, but it's also going to take quite a few raw materials, the raw materials that are needed to produce these batteries. When it comes to these necessary raw materials, according to this Tesla patent application, the cathode active material is usually the most expensive component in lithium ion batteries. In fact, according to this graphic from visualcapitalist.com, cathode cost is estimated to be around 51% of the total average battery cost. Now, of course, cost is really important if you want to produce an affordable electric vehicle and make a profit on that vehicle. But also you have to look at the supply of these raw materials um, for building electric vehicles as well. And with an increasing demand for the uh, battery grade raw materials, it's getting harder to source these materials. Because of this, Tesla has decided to skip the middleman, the processors, and do the processing of cathode materials themselves to give them greater control over cost and supply. Now, a large portion of cathode cost come down to the expensive raw materials themselves, the nickel, the manganese, the cobalt, and of course, lithium. But the cost of processing those raw materials into their lithium mixed metal oxide form and then transporting them to Tesla's factories is also a significant cost factor. Thus, it makes a lot of sense that Tesla has focused special attention on the cathode side of the battery. As you may know, Tesla is currently constructing a cathode material manufacturing facility next to Gigafactory Texas. At Tesla's Battery Day, Drew mentioned how this facility would help localize their cathode supply chain, and Elon Musk made it clear that this facility should be able to process raw cathode materials in-house into the form needed for battery cathode production. When it comes to the size of this facility, the project description of a July 22nd Tesla permit application mentions a size of 38,228 square feet, but I'm unsure if this is the size of the slab or the actual internal usable space. When it comes to construction progress of this facility, this recent drone footage from Jeff Roberts on YouTube shows that progress seems to be coming along very nicely. It is important to note that beyond just Tesla's ability to greater control the cost and the supply of their cathode materials, this facility should also give Tesla the ability to produce cathode materials with a more environmentally friendly process. Tesla plans to use an innovative new process which greatly reduces the wastewater and byproducts that are normally a result of processing raw ore into its lithium metal oxide form. This recent Tesla patent application describes these innovative processes in the following way. Traditional methods for producing lithium mixed metal oxide cathode materials typically generate large amounts of effluent, which is liquid waste, which effluent must be treated prior to discharge. However, with Tesla's new approach, they mentioned that the bulk of the aqueous solution used for the wet chemical reaction is recycled back to the reactor so that the total process has little or no effluent generated during production of the cathode precursor material. When it comes to what Tesla means by little or no affluent, this patent application also mentions, in the wet chemical process described above for making the precursor, the liquid can be directly recycled up to at least 75% and more preferably up to at least 90% and still more preferably up to 100% to the reaction system without any adverse effects on the overall reaction. However, once again, beyond the obvious environmental benefits of less affluent, less wastewater to process, um, there's also a huge cost implication as well because if you don't have to process all this effluent, all this wastewater, you don't have to pay for that treatment and that processing. So I believe this is also another key piece that will allow Tesla to more efficiently and in a more environmentally friendly way produce these cathode materials and this is actually quite a big deal. 
We know from the limiting factor on YouTube that Tesla's 4680 battery cells, at least the ones they're producing right now, have a nickel, manganese, and cobalt-based cathode. But beyond those three materials, lithium is also a crucial piece of cathode production, and Tesla may soon be in the lithium processing business as well. In case you haven't been paying attention, the cost of lithium has increased substantially as demand has increased. In Tesla's Q2 2022 earnings call, Elon Musk, when discussing raw materials cost, put it this way, the pricing of lithium is insane. Elon then followed this up by saying, I would like to once again urge entrepreneurs to enter the lithium refining business. The mining is relatively easy. The refining is much harder. You have to refine lithium into battery grade lithium carbonate and lithium hydroxide, which has to be extremely high purity. There's like software margins in lithium processing right now. It's a license to print money. Tesla is apparently taking Elon's advice when it comes to lithium refining because according to this Reuters article, Tesla recently filed an application with the Texas Comptroller's office for a potential lithium refining facility, which if approved could be operational by the end of 2024. If Tesla does indeed move forward with this lithium refining project, obviously it's beneficial that it's there in Texas, uh, you know, somewhat close to Tesla's Gigafactory. But also, once again, it's going to give them more control over the cost of the battery grade lithium, uh, that refined product. And also supply, because once again, as demand increases for battery grade materials, that's going to drive cost up. And if battery manufacturers, and specifically Tesla EV auto manufacturers, are able to control more of their supply, they're going to have a huge benefit over other uh, EV manufacturers who do not control this portion of their supply chain. Obviously, we're still at the beginning stages of these two projects. The cathode facility is still being built. And uh, this lithium refining idea is really just an application at the moment, and uh, it's not a for sure thing yet, but I believe it makes a lot of sense, and I believe if Tesla doesn't move forward with this particular example, they'll have a similar example some point in the future, because Tesla is definitely making a move to shore up their uh, battery uh, supply chain, and I believe this is an important part of their future if they're truly going to reach uh, three terawatt hours of batteries being produced per year by 2030. I could be wrong in this, but I don't believe any other EV manufacturer has this level of vertical integration and this level of control over their battery material supply chain. And once again, this is just a huge example of how Tesla is uh, really building the foundation that will give them a huge edge in the future when it comes to battery production. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also, if you currently work in the battery industry and you have any insights that you'd like to share with me, feel free to email me. My email address is john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. Again, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt. Com. I also want to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.